Lord. Hallelujah. Well, it's an honor to talk to you tonight and give you God's word. I believe you've been ready. You've been waiting for this moment. So let's take a minute and pray. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to hear your word. We thank you, Lord, for our lives can never be the same. Thank you, Lord, for you have that word that will come to empower us, that word that carries with it wisdom, carries with it grace. As you look into your word, open our eyes, Lord, to spiritual truth, nourish us, strengthen us. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today, I want to talk to you today on a simple subject. You can have what you say. You can have what you say. Actually, I should say, you are what you say. Okay? But I'm going to say you can have what you say, and then we're going to see more from God's word. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11, this is verse 3. Let me start from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Okay? Now, please don't forget I said you can have what you say. So last week I taught you on the spirituality of life. I showed you how there is a real spiritual world. Today I'm teaching you on the spirituality of words. Okay? That's what I'm calling you can have what you say. Today I want to focus and show you how important your words are in the spirit. Now he says, through faith we understand the worlds were framed, they were put in order by the word of God. Use the amplified so they will see. By faith you understand that the worlds were framed. Now write this somewhere. Faith believes, faith speaks. Okay? Faith does two things. It believes, then it speaks. But look at the Amplified Bible. On the classic, I'm at verse 3. Look at verse 3. For by faith, he says, by faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages, ages were framed, fashioned, put in order. Can you see what God's word does? Put the worlds in order and equipped them for the intended purpose. Now, this is not just the universe he's talking about. He's talking about the system. He's talking about the course. He's talking about how the event should go. This is why you look at nature and it seems to have so much order. Do you understand? So that now you look at man, now man is marrying man. You will never see that with animals. Why is it so? Nature seems to have so much order. Today I want to show what is responsible for it. Because what God does is he puts seed and then he sets, uh, uh, no, no, he sets the foundation principles to run his creation. And any time man uh, uh, detaches himself from God, he runs into error. So he says the worlds were framed, equipped for the intended purpose by the word of God. Now, I want you to see this verse. Never forget it. What you see came from what? Alright? Now, that should tell you something. The whole universe, as it is, it was made by words. Now, from today, you're going to also appreciate the gift God gave you of speaking. Because of all of God's creation, only man speaks in words. Alright? Dogs bark, they don't speak in words. Cows don't speak in words. Only man does. Are you listening? So it's a gift God gave you. Alright? 
Now imagine this, that God created what you see by words. And then he gives you ability to speak. In other words, the most powerful element in all of God's universe is his word. Alright? And so that means the one that can speak can rule the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The one that can speak is the one that is in charge. Because, listen and listen hard, this world is ruled by what? Hmm? Is ruled by what? Now, you must understand this also, that a man cannot live beyond his words. Alright? You can live beyond your words. What you've been saying will be eventually what you experience, if you are not experiencing it yet. So we are dealing with the spirituality of what? So that you must begin to watch your speech. David said, put a watch over my lips. I'll show that to you in a minute. Put common English Bible, C-E-B, verse 3. Watch what that Bible said. By faith we understand that the universe has been created by a word from God. Hallelujah. A word from God created the universe. All right? Now, a word from God did all this. Now, today, it is said that word is near you in your mouth. It must be in two places. Are you listening to me? It must be in two places. So when we talk about the word of God created everything you see. Now I'm going to move to where you begin to take advantage of this power resident in God's word. Is resident there, waiting for someone to exploit it, waiting for someone to take advantage of it. Because the same scripture that sent to Lazarus, come forth, that same come forth is available for anyone who should come forth. Are you hearing me? The same scripture that says, rise up and walk, is available for every cripple. The same power is present in those words. Are you following me? So he says, the word was created, Romans 11.3, it was created by a word from God. God spoke, and then things came to pass. Hallelujah. I said, you can have what you say. All right? So this is what you must do from today. Watch what you say. All right? Watch what you say. I like to say it this way. If you don't like what you're seeing, change what you are saying. Are you hearing me? You don't like the circumstances around you, change what you are saying. Because just like choices have consequences, words have consequences too. If you begin to look at words as seeds, then you will know they have harvest. Am I making sense? They have harvest. And as you are talking, see, you are sowing seeds. Right? You are deciding what will come of you? You know, it's like what I've always told you of a man who has a farm. And the guy decides when everyone else is sowing, I'm not going to go out to sow. I'll just sleep. Now, if you don't sow in your farm, doesn't mean nothing will grow. Weeds will grow. All right? And we all know you can't feed on weeds. So harvest season, you will be begging. This tells you whether you speak or not. Something will become of you. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? Whether you speak or not, something will become of you. I'm just giving you more information so that you know whether I'm talking or not, words are influencing. Do you understand? Now, uh, scripture reveals that even when Balaam was called to cast the children of Israel, you don't cast with your mouth shut. He was casting with... Yeah? His mouth speaking words. You bless the same way. So James 3 said, the same mouth tongue that is blessing cannot be used to curse. See, the same tongue, same words, same formula, including witches. That's how they do it. No witch curses or does his witchcraft with his mouth shut. They all speak. All right? So it matters what you say. I dare say your mouth determines your destiny. You hearing what I'm saying? So God says to uh, this man of God, was it Zechariah? He says to him, I'm going to bless you with a child, John. Alright? 
And the man said, My wife Elizabeth is too old for this now, Lord. And the angel of the Lord said, Since you do not believe, your mouth will be shut. Now, you're thinking, what's the connection between the man doesn't believe and his mouth being shut? Because even though God said it, you are not supposed to speak and believe. We would rather have your mouth shut. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I told you faith works when the word is in your heart and in your mouth. Two places. So God, so this guy doesn't believe what he's saying and he has no time to preach faith to the man. Do you understand? Because he was working with time. It's only six months and Jesus will show up. We don't have time to waste preaching to this guy faith. So he says your mouth will be shut. Are you listening? So I said, your mouth, your destiny. God gave you the ability to speak. And that means you can be in charge. You can decide what happens of you. Alright? You can decide. You just have to be speaking the right words. Look at Matthew 12. This is verse 36. The words of Jesus. Matthew 12. I'm at verse 36. But I say to you that every idle word, say idle. No, what is an idle word? It's a useless word. It's not a word that you speak while seated on a chair, relaxing and on a rocky chair. It's not a word you speak when you're idle. No, it is the word that is idle. Do you understand? It's talking about a useless word. It's talking about a non-working word. So he says, every idol word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in judgment. Go to verse 36, 7. 37, please. Okay. Mine says, for by your words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. See, no one is condemning you. Your own words. Your own words are justifying you. Your own words are condemning you. Your own words are justifying It's your own mouth. That's why I said your mouth, your destiny. Go back to verse 36. Put up the Amplified Bible, the classic edition. I want them to see something there. Uh -huh. But I tell you on the day of judgment, men will have to give account for every idol. See what is an idol word? Inoperative, non-working. The other Amplified Bible said something there. It said useless word. Uh -huh. See? For every careless and useless word they speak. Now, not only are you going to give account, but there will be consequence. Their words you speak and their seeds. So you harvest. Amen. You harvest. I'll say again, you don't like what you're seeing? Change what you're saying. Romans 10, look at verse 9. Look at how you got born again. How you got born again. It's just this same principle. Look at verse 9. This is simply how you received Jesus. Romans 10, I'm at verse 9. That if you shall confess with what? See, your mouth is involved in your salvation. Ever wondered why devils render people unable to speak? Why would a devil make someone dumb? Because he knows this your mouth is not for eating only. Hmm? Oh yes. He won't stop you from eating, but he will stop you from talking. Oh yes, because guys that don't speak, do they eat? They do. The devil has no problem when you use your mouth to eat. He has a problem when you use it to chart your future. He has a problem when you begin to speak God's word. The devil has not come to stop you from eating. Go ahead and eat. But he will stop them from speaking. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Now the man said something here. This is how you got born again. He said, if you will confess with your mouth. You see that confession? Okay. Uh, note it somewhere. Let me define confession for you. Confession means to speak the same thing in agreement with God. Alright? Now, confession is not, I am blessed, and you say amen. Your amen is no confession. No. Amen simply put means you are saying so be it. 
Amen. Yeah? Are you listening to me? Confession is you read the word of God and you see God said you are blessed. Confession means you agree with what God said. Then you say what he said concerning you. Huh? So you read a scripture that says you are of God and you have overcome them. If you just read that and say amen, it's no confession. Confession is you see it, believe it, that means agree with what God said concerning you, then you say it just like he said it. So Bible said in the mouth of two witnesses, our word is done what? Established. So you see what God said and put your witness to it. In fact, I'll show scriptures that say with your mouth you affirm your salvation. Alright? You affirm and confirm it. Okay? Now, watch. He said, with your mouth you confess unto salvation. With your mouth you confess the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. See salvation? Two places. Believe first. Which is why before a man gets born again, someone must preach to the man. And the man must hear the gospel. And when he believes, you call them. Say, have you believed what you had? And when the man comes, you say, now say after me. Or declare Jesus as Lord of your life. Are you following now? That's how salvation is, you know, consummated. Look at verse 10. You will continue this thought. Verse 10. He said, for with the heart. Look at this. The man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth. You see, righteousness means you are set right with God. But salvation isn't complete until your mouth is doing something. So he says, with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Use the Amplified, please. For verse 10. I want you to see something. For with the heart, a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, being freed from the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. With the mouth, he acknowledges, confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. And I told you on Saturday, salvation is not just forgiveness of sins. Salvation includes very many blessings. Talks about preservation. Talks about deliverance. Talks about all of the blessings of God. Which means the same way you confessed and you are freed from sin. Is the same way you declare it and you, are, you, you begin to walk in health. Because as it is, you are walking in the righteousness of God. So, walk in the full package of salvation with the same principle. Are you hearing me? So, getting healed is as simple as getting born again. Hmm? See how easy it was for someone to get born again? That's how easy it is to get healed. Same principle. Same laws in operation. You can have what you say. That's what I want to show you. A man's life will always go in the direction of his words. Huh? Think about that. Your life will always go in the direction of your words. Okay? So, this means, please listen to me. This means I can listen to a healthy man talk and I know he is going to the hospital. Huh? The way the man is talking, it's a matter of time. He will be sick. And I can listen to a man that seems to have nothing in his pocket. Nothing at all. I can listen to how the man is talking and believing and thinking. I can listen to his communication. And I can tell you it's a matter of time. This man will come out of that situation. I can also listen to a man with wealth. Listen to how he's talking and I know it's soon enough his wealth will fly away. You see? Because I'm saying you, the way you talk, the, the life of a man will always go in the direction of his words. Your tongue is like a rudder in a big ship. The rudder is what determines the direction. Hmm? That's what your tongue is like. All the captain does, please put up James 3 because someone might be watching and thinking, Pastor just quoting his own stuff. Look at James 3 so you understand that 
This is no jokes. This is your life. Verse 4. Use NIV. James 3, 4. Or take ships, ships as an example. This is a ship. Although they are so large, even though they are so large, hmm? even though the challenge, the mountain is so big, do you understand me? Even though I've gone so far in that opposite direction, there is something that can change the situation. He said, even though the ship is so large and are driven by strong weeds. See, these are circumstances that seem to be so strong. They don't start the part of the tongue. He said, are driven by strong weeds. He said, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. And you are the pilot of your life. And the tongue is a rudder. So you will have weeds, strong weeds. You know, while, when you're on that sea and the ship is just sailing and sailing, it seems as though the weeds should determine the course. He said the rudder determines. See, I can be in the same economic country, whatever situation, and weeds come, shelling going down. I don't go in the direction of my economy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I go in the direction of my speech ever the pilot wants it to go. You see, it's working to go, even though the weeds are strong. So it doesn't matter the opposition. The rudder determines the direction. I hope you know speed is not as important as direction. Hmm? Oh yes, if you're supposed to go to Nairobi and you take a thousand kilometers per hour to Nakuru, you've wasted your time and energy. Hmm? Direction is important too. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't just give you speed. He gives you guidance. He gives you direction. He comes with both of them. Alright? Problem is sometimes we have zeal and moving fast. Not taking time to listen to his direction. Okay? Yes. Now, you see, the tongue, the tongue, the tongue. Though small, it makes a lot of things happen. So I said, a man's life will always go in the direction of his words. All right? He'll always go in that direction. Now, I've always taught you this, but it bears repeating. You see this simple scripture here? When you watch a large... The man is not talking about boats that you use, row, row your boat. No, that's not the thing he's talking about. He's talking about a big ship. The kind that, you know, sail through the sea. All right? Now, if you watch, if you've ever been in one, and you see the pilot at work, and he wants to change the course of the ship, are you listening to me? When the pilot wants to change the course of the ship, the, the, the ship he goes to the radar, turns it in the direction, he takes coordinates, changes to the direction he wants it to go. And for some time, the large ship keeps moving in the wrong direction, and the pilot is not worried. Why is he not worried? He has already given the instruction. Change course. It's a matter of time. The ship will keep changing and changing and align to the direction. See, sometimes your tongue is similar. You've been talking and talking and talking and talking and finally you heard us say, change your talk. And you stop saying I'm poor. You stop saying I'm unworthy. You stop saying I'm all these things. And you started declaring God's word. And it's been six months. Nothing has changed. That's a lie. Something is changing. Are you hearing me? It's a lie. Something is taking place. When you begin to speak, things are set in motion. You just have been on the negative for so long. It's going to take a while. All right? So things will align. It's just a matter of time. What you do is keep saying it. You've heard Pastor Chris say that? Mm -hmm. So you keep on the line declaring God. Because once you stop, the thing stops. I'll show this from Ezekiel for you. So you will know how significant your words are to your life. Okay? Yes. Watch this. Mark 11. I'm at verse 23. You can have what you say. You can. 
You can. Use, use New King James, please. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says uh, to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will do what? He will have what? Whatever he says. See? It's not limited to one thing. Now, here's what I want you to see. Now, let's not count with the first say. Alright? Because this one, Jesus said, for assuredly I say. This is Jesus saying to us. So let's start from the second say. You're here? For assuredly I say to you, whoever says, one, you're here? That's the first say. The man says to the mountain, be removed and be cast to the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes what that those things which he does what? Says two and says he will love whatever he does what says three hmm? and the man says something he says but believes how many times did he say believe once hmm? so he said once you believe declare it more are you hearing me once you've already believed God's word declare it more Put it, there's a reason why God said you the word should not depart from your mouth there's a reason why because hmm, you're here because when you're speaking God's word, it will affect your concentration. All right? Yes. You hear them louder. All right? They help, they help your faith when you're speaking those words loud in a, in a way you can hear you. They help your faith. I'll use scriptures to explain that to you. Don't worry. Now, he says this last line here. He says, you will have what you say. But I want you to see, he said, the believing is in your heart. This has nothing to do with the doubt in your mind. Hmm? Because sometimes you are saying these things, declaring God's word, declaring a mot and a conqueror, declaring all these beautiful things, and your mind is fighting what you're saying. The word said, believe in your heart. If you keep saying it, what is in your heart will eventually affect your mind. Hmm? So you don't let the doubts going through your mind and all these concerns going through your mind affect your faith that is in your heart. Jesus said, let not your heart to be troubled. That means I can watch my heart. Hmm? Keep it away from troubles and fears and worries. You're following? Mm -hmm. Now, Proverbs 18, 20. Proverbs 18, 20. Use the Amplified Bible. Hallelujah. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Please use the King James so they will see what the man is talking about. He's not talking about this. It's not this stomach he's talking about. A man's what? A man's belly. You say, why did I choose to refer to you uh, and use belly? Because Jesus later on told us what the belly is. He said in John 17, 37, 38, he said, out of your what? Your belly shall flow rivers. He's not talking about your stomach. He's talking about your spirit. Hmm? He's talking about your spirit. So when he says stomach, some people mis misquote, misinterpret it, and they think he's talking about this stomach that you put food. Because if you just start li thinking literally, he says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. This will confuse you. You'll be thinking, how can the fruit of my mouth satisfy my stomach? You see? But when you see it is your spirit he's talking about, and he's saying your spirit feeds, should always be connected to your mouth. There should always be a flow. Are you hearing me? He is letting you know that your heart and your mouth, there is a direct link. Hmm? That's why even speaking in tongues doesn't go through your mind. It gets from your spirit to your mouth. These two connect in a very special way. So much so Jesus says out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? 
the mouth speaks. Alright? That's how connected they are. I can listen to a man talk by the end of the day. I'll tell you what his, his heart is filled with. It's, it, it is in their words. Just like I know what is the heart of God by listening to him speak. Hmm? When I listen to God speak, oh, that's what is in his heart. And because he has spoken over and over, I know his heart. It's right here. Okay? Yes. His words, his heart. Amen. So he says, a man's belly shall be satisfied. Go to Proverbs, please. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. The man is not talking about your lips enlarging. It's not what this is talking about. You know when he says increase of your lips, he's talking about your confessions. Okay? So he says, your spirit is satisfied. By the fruit of your lips. By the declaration. The confessions of your lips. And then he says when you increase your confessions. He says the man is filled by the same. You see? So that means your confession, declaration of God's word should not be going down. It should be increasing. If you are doing it twice a day, increase it to five times. If you are doing it five times, make it ten. Always. Bible said meditate on the word of God day and night. It's always. If you've been saying only once, you know all these things, we are more than a conqueror. Don't say it once. Say it over and over. If you say it over and over, what will begin to happen? Your spirit man will begin to arise and be in charge of your life. He will begin to, you know, affect the things and what happens around you, you will, be, you will notice you begin to rise above the situations of your life. Just by using your tongue to declare it. Today I want you to know, there is an organ in your body that is more powerful than anything God gave you. It's called the tongue. It's not even the mind. No, it's not. It's not. It's your tongue. So much so, the Bible said, the man that can control his tongue is a perfect man. Is a mature man. Hmm? The man that can tame. Actually, the Bible said we've been able to tame animals, but we are yet to get to where we can tame our tongues. But know who helps it? Who helps us to tame the tongue? The Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Spirit. Once you receive the Holy Spirit and you constantly yield to Him, <laughs> once you yield to God's Word and yield to the Holy Spirit as well, you will notice that your tongue will receive discipline. And that doesn't mean you remain mum and quiet. That means you talk right. That means you speak life. Hmm? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So watch. Ha. Go back to Proverbs, please. I need to share this to you. Am I helping you? You can have what you say. Yes. You want increase? Speak increase. Whatever you want. Because this, this is a law I'm setting in motion from today. From today. Think about it. We started by seeing from Hebrews 11.3 that everything you see came from God's word. In Genesis 1, whatever God created, he spoke it into existence. He said water produce animals, produce fish, produce. He said the earth produce plants. Even when he was creating man, he spoke. He said let us make man. Hmm? Everything came from God's word. Which tells you something. It, you, know, you, you know, you need to hear this. That God's word created what you see and God's word sustained them. They ran by the same word. So that now you've been fishing all night. There is no fish. The master speaks his word. And all fish is coming to that same net. Because a word was released. All it takes is his word. Hmm? All it takes is his word for a catch. Hmm? When he speaks, fish gather. When he speaks, opportunities gather. When he speaks, conditions favor you. You are not hearing me. When he speaks where there was no productiveness, immediately the ground changes. When he speaks. Huh? 
when he speaks. And all I'm telling you is confession means agree with him. What he said, what God says concerning me is what I will say about me. All right? It won't be different on my lips. God can be saying I'm righteous and I'm busy saying I'm just a worm. No. God can be saying you are so healthy, Ben, as healthy as Jesus is. And I'm busy saying, oh, I'm just a sickler. I'm just, I'm just something was, someone was about to die or something. I can't be ch- making declarations against God's word. It's part of the reason why I am studying God's word. So I can learn his language. See, when, it, when a child is born, now, uh, now, if you were born in China, Hmm? Assuming you were not born in Kenya, if you were born in China, you'll be speaking Chinese today. All right? Every child comes with an ability to learn any language. Hmm? You just have to be in the right community, China, Chinese people. You'll be speaking Chinese so friendly. And how did you learn to speak the language you now speak, Mother Tongue? No one sat you down and said, Say this, you were copying them. You are imitating them. Sometimes you pronounce your words so funny they will laugh at you. But you still pronounce them again. You are copying. Until now you have perfected it. Now you come into the kingdom of God. And God begins to tell you now you are in a different kingdom. Now we don't talk the same way. You can be in my kingdom and speaking as one in the kingdom of darkness. So he begins to change your confession. He begins to change how you speak. Which is why, listen for when the master speaks. He was in the world but spoke differently. And he said, I'm from above. You guys are from beneath. So you speak the language of down here. I speak from above. I speak different. When his friend Lazarus died, the master said, he is sleeping. The disciples said, he will wake up. Jesus said, dummy, he is dead don't understand what I'm talking about. Because to Jesus, he doesn't speak death. Are you hearing me? Death can come from his lips. In fact, he said, my word are spirit and life, not death. He speaks life. And I'm about to show you some of these words that you must begin to change today. You'll be amazed at how most people have trapped themselves with their words. Most of them. And it shows you why you've been praying for a change of situation and nothing is changing. Because even though you are praying, your words are putting you in the same place. Your words. Hallelujah. Uh Go to Proverbs, please. He said, with the increase of his lips, increase your confession. Sing praises that confess and celebrate his name. All right? Your songs should be confessions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh He says, increase of his lips, he shall be filled. Look at verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What is the power of the tongue? To speak what? Are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat their fruit. Please use the amplifier so they will see what I was talking about here. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it and do what? He da- you see, you, it's not only saying, I love the power of words. Indulge it. In other words, engage it. Engage that power. Alright? Engage that power. So, Jesus will fight people, demon possessed, and they can't speak. And Bible would say, he will touch their tongue and lose their tongues to speak. Who held them? The demon spirit held their tongues. That's why I'm telling you speaking is so spiritual. So spiritual. That's why everyone is determining what you say. The world is, keeps giving you a, 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 a sort of template of how you should speak. They show you things. They come with phrases. Hmm? Even what Kenya now is you know, trading with. Just watch this, all these threads. They, every time they come with a new thread. Watch that it's not any phrase that is threading. No. It's not any thread. Uh, not any phrase. No. they just a specific one. You just pick one. Especially if it's a wrong one. Okay? 
If it's a wrong one, one that maybe stands against marriage, all right? That phrase, the enemy will make sure, fad it. And then everyone is saying it because as long as you're saying it, you come under. That becomes your experience. It becomes your experience. All right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you are people that, when they're talking with you, they will be seeking for affirmation from you. Yes. I talk to you and say, Eh, Negumu. Sindio? Yes. So you say, Eh, Negumu. Eh? Negumu. Ama wewe ukona pesa? Hapa na tatuna. Kuna mutu wakona pesa. Yes. And money that answers all things is listening. I'm careful of what I say. Ever careful. You can't make me say the wrong things. No, I would rather keep quiet. Are you hearing me? I would rather keep quiet. One day someone told me recently, he said, Akuna Pesa. I said, hold on. He's my friend so I can correct him. I said, hold on. From today be saying this. Be saying, Sina Pesa. Don't say Akuna Pesa. People have money. It's you that do not have it. Hmm? Yes, in the same economy that you're saying, Akuna Pesa. You do know, right now as you are talking, someone is importing a new car. As we are talking now, someone is... <laughs> All right, and someone else is busy saying there's no money. Even how the economy works is, once money leaves your pocket, it enters another pocket. Talk to me now. All right, but I will determine what happens to me. I will determine my experience by my speaking. Okay, by my speaking. Why not? I'm speaking this way. I might look crazy. But why I seem crazy is because you're not seeing me in the spirit. You are not seeing what I'm building with words. Hmm? It's just like if a farmer took you to his farm and he said, you know what? This year I'm going to have a 10 bucks. And you look at bare ground and you're thinking, 10, 10 bucks from this? The farmer said, the seed is in the ground. So don't judge me yet. It's a matter of time. Give me a few months, you'll see my harvest. All right? That's how it is with confession. Sometimes it seems as though the results can be seen, but they're in the spirit. All right? You've been sowing seeds. Hmm? Am I helping? Yes. Use the message Bible, please, so they will see this verse 21. Okay. Words do what? Words kill. Words give life. They are either poison. Hello? Words are either poison or fruit. You choose. Hmm? You choose whether to poison your business huh? or to bless it. You choose whether to poison your marriage or life or to bless it. You choose whether to poison your children or to bless them. Some of us grew with a lot of poison around us. Oh God, God bless my daddy. He would always call me a fool. Thank God I never believed it. Hmm? Yes. All right. If our kids actually turned out to be what we call them when we are angry, we'll change what we say. But but Bible says, (laughs) Bible says these words are serious and they are real. The Amplified Bible says, you reap the consequences of your words. Words have consequences. It's what people do not know. So sometimes you're trying to get all of us to pray for you. When really what you're praying for, we are trying to change harvest. Do you understand this? You are like a farmer who has a farm full of maize grain. He is harvesting. And you call me in that farm and you say, Pastor, pray for me. I want melons. I want melons. I say, <laughs> how can we have melons? You sow the maize. There's nothing that can happen and the maize turns to melon. The only way to help you, you begin the process again. Plant melon seeds. Do you understand it now? 
So we are trying to change what someone has been sowing. Okay? Now, for some of us who have hit 30, 25 and above, you, you've been speaking since you, are, you were how old? Maybe one year or three. You were already speaking. And the devil, the world is cro- so crooked, it teaches even the smallest kid to talk negative. You will find a two-year-old girl saying Atuna Pesa. And you're thinking, how do you know Atuna Pesa? You're two years of age. And the young girl is growing saying the same thing. At 30, you're thinking why money is not with you. Or someone who has grown talking negative and negative and negative. These are 20 plus years of talking that way. They can't change overnight, brothers and sisters. You must begin to do the same. Hmm? Over a period of time and consistently. Hmm? Consistently. Hallelujah. Okay. So he said, words kill. Hmm? Okay? Words kill. Now he says, words satisfy the mother as much as food does the stomach. Good talk is as gratifying as good harvest. Verse 21, please. Words kill, words give life. They are either poison or fruit. You choose. No, I'm telling you today, you choose. Make a choice. What are you going to be saying about you? What will you say about what concerns you? What will you say? Particularly when I pray for the ministry and you included, I don't ever speak negative about it. Never. For as long as I have known this revelation, I will always watch what I say. Because my words are not empty words. No. Bible said, I have told you, maybe last month, I showed you you are a king. Imagine a king talking carelessly. The, the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes said, it is wise, it is better to, to hear the whisper of wisdom than to hear the ranting of a king of fools. He said, I would rather be hearing the whispers of wisdom than be hearing a king shouting foolishly and he belongs to the company of fools. So he says, I would rather be hearing wisdom. And wisdom is God's word. Okay? So I can be saying negative. No, no. I will always speak right. When it pertains to me, I will speak right. Alright? And that tells you, you are seeing all the results we are having. All the fruits we are having. We are harvesting what we have been sowing. Glory to God. These are things. The Bible said, God is not mocked. What a man sows is what he reaps. God is exactly like this earth. You can't trick the earth from harvesting maize when you planted beans. <laughs> you understand me? You can trick the earth and all of a sudden it gives you maize. It gives you back exactly what you put in there. That's how the heart is. Okay? That's how the heart is. this thing too personal, too real? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh yes. You are blessed to be hearing these things very young. Imagine when you eat 80 and 90 and you've been declaring these words. My God, it will be impossible to render you sick. Are you hearing me? It will be impossible. Because of how you've set your life in a certain direction. It will be impossible to change it. Hmm? Impossible. I have a lot to say there, but allow me to put up this for you. Proverbs, okay, let me show you Proverbs 6 too, quickly. I said some people are trapped by their what? It's important I show you that. Proverbs 6 2. Use the New King James, please. You are snared, not to be snared, trapped by your words or the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Use NIV. He said, you are trapped by your words. Hmm? He said, if you've been trapped, hello, if you've been trapped by what you said, so what I said can trap me. Hmm? What I said can trap me. Oh yes, you see it over even in the natural life now. 
you, you have seen people, particularly when they are dealing with our police force, maybe traffic and all that, and the man maybe is harassing you for no reason, they will take cameras. Nowadays, people are very good. They will take camera and be recording live. They don't only want the video, they want the audio too. Now, once you are in a court, you know, whatever place, and now the, 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 the police officers and, that, and you produce the evidence, that man is either acquitted or jailed by what he said and did. You see? You don't need to provide, to add anything on it. His own words will be working against him. You see? So he says, there are words you can speak in the spirit. Even though down here you really want the situation to change. In the spirit, what you are saying doesn't reflect what you want. Okay? Mm -hmm. So speak, listen to me, listen and listen hard. Your words should be for what you want to be. Hmm? Not what is already there. So when you are sick, this is what you should say. You say, I have the health of God. I have the life of God. Hmm? That's what you should be saying. Because that's what you want. Now, if you only keep declaring what is already there, it won't change. Bible said, your father speaks of things that be not as though they were. He speaks of things that be not. Those are the things he speaks. Hmm? All right. So in the meantime, looking at my M-Pesa, my bank account, it's 0, 0.00. The bank is almost calling me. Hmm? And then I don't speak that. No. I read the word of God and I see that, you see, I'm a joint heir with Christ. I see that my father Abraham was promised the whole world. I see that God has given me the whole world to use. So I don't say I'm broke. That's not my language. Leave that to the world. Because saying you're broke won't change your situation. Do you understand me? It won't change your situation. What will change your situation is declaring what God declared about you. As a matter of fact, why it's not changing is because what God is saying is, is being fought by what you're saying. Hmm? When your confession agrees to God's word concerning you, the thing will manifest. All right? Yes. So, rather than saying I'm broke, because I didn't see a scripture in the Bible that said, they that you know are born again should be saying I'm broke. The scriptures I saw said, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. In heavenly places, in Christ. That's my scripture. So I say, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. Uh, and, and, and I go to, to my own person, I'm looking at 0, 0.0, and I say, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. What I'm seeing is not all that there is. Hmm? I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. And then I go to 2 Corinthians 9, and I see God is able. To make all grace about toward me. So that you always having. So I see that and I say, God has made every grace to about toward me. I always have. I always have. I'm walking in abundance. God supplies every of my need. All that I require for life and godliness has been given unto me. I don't walk in lack. I walk in abundance. God is my supplier. God is my source. You, you, are you hearing me? That's how I keep talking. That's the language of the believer. Don't be saying I'm broke. Don't be saying speaking like the widow of Zarephath that said, I only have one meal. I'm collecting these two sticks. I eat and die. What a, what a way to speak. The prophet of God said, mm -mm, relax, relax. Cook what you have for me. Hello? Cook what you have for me. Let me have first. Then he said, for thus says the Lord. You see, God must give you a word. For thus says the Lord, the jar of flour shall not run out. The cruise of oil shall not run out. That's the word of God. That's what you must get. All right? So you change what you say. And that's where you come to God's word. So you can find what God said about your situation. Then you make it your confession too. Amen.
Uh -huh. So he says you can be trapped by your what? Look at Proverbs 21, 23. I have five minutes, right? Proverbs 21, 23. Use the Passion Bible, please. Hallelujah. Watch your words. Do what? Watch them. Watch your words and be careful what you say and you will be surprised how few troubles you will have. It will shock you how troubles will reduce. <laughs> Change what you say. You will be surprised how many will love you. <laughs> You'll be surprised how much your body will be healthy if you just change your talk. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. You will be shocked. Oh, Paul said in Philippians 4.19, he said, I know how to be full. I know how to be full. I have learned the secret of being independent whatever the circumstances. He said it's a secret I have learned. I know how to be full. Same chapter verse 19. He said my God shall supply all your need because I'm supplied. He's going to overflow to you. This is my confession. So from today what you do, remember always you can have what you say. It remember, you can have. Have means you can possess it. You can manifest it. Bible says in the book of Titus, it said the word of God has been manifested by preaching. Preaching is proclamation. It's declaring it. You want to see the power of God present? Preach. Preach the gospel. You see the power there. Hmm? Yes. Hallelujah. You are a prophet of your own life. Did you hear what I said? You are a prophet of your own life. That means don't wait for some prophet from whichever nation to come give you prophecy. This book is full of prophetic words to you. You're hearing me? Yes. And prophecy is not your name is Benson. I already know I'm Benson. Do you understand me? You're not prophesying to me, sir. Oh, you're Benson. You are, you are whatever KG is. How I, can, I can get that by stepping on our skin. You come from camp. How will that help me? Give me the word. Show me one scripture where Isaiah showed up and he began to talk that way. When the man showed up, he was with God's word. The word of wisdom to change the situation. Alright? So that's prophecy. God's word. Prophecy means speaking words potent with power to change the situation. It talks about speaking. It's not just the future. No. Prophecy is not just telling us the future. Prophecy is also about bringing a word present loaded with power to change my situation. That's prophetic words. So I can hear a prophet and my situation will change. I can hear prophetic word. No, you, all this prophecy of next year, a time like this, God is not, not talking about it. even now. He's not even waiting anymore a time like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when talk about prophecy, these are words full of power. Hmm? Yes. Words full of power. Pregnant with ability. Are you hearing me? Pregnant with the miracle working power. When you prophesy, the power of God should be present. Those are believe Bible said, believe the prediction of his prophets and you will you will prosper. He said you will once you believe it, you will the power to prosper is in their predictions. I don't even need to believe my name is Ben. Sir, I don't need faith for that. Do you see how much easily it, it goes, disqualifies it? I don't need faith to believe I'm a man. <laughs> oh, I'm taking a shower every day. It's more than true that I'm a man. Do you understand? It's more than sure, no, no. Evidence is there. Hmm? But when you speak God's word, prophetic words, there's another place where we need faith. Faith is what you respond with. And you see results. Glory to God. <sighs> Watch your words. 
Be careful what you say and you will you will be surprised she you will be surprised my dear you will be surprised how few your troubles will be hmm? Have you ever been in a place and maybe drunkards or somebody just not drunk and they came in a place and some guy wouldn't just shut his mouth he just talking and talking and while you're seated there you knew it's a matter of time before the guy gets a beating you were just listening to him talk and you knew Woo, this mouth will land you in trouble you see use the living bible and show them what this is <clears throat> TLB keep your mouth closed and you will stay out of trouble Yes. Keep it close. Where you don't need to talk. You know, Bible said in the Thessalonians, he said, study to be what? Mm -hmm. It's a study. Study to be quiet and to mind your own business. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Study. Some people need to study it. Some people need to go to the school code of how to learn to be quiet. If you're always talking, in fact, go to CEV, please. We'll get to the Thessalonians. Put CEV. You'll see what CEV said here. Huh? Mm-hmm. Watch what you say. Watching what you say can save you what? How about the message? Watch your words. Hold your tongue. You will save yourself a lot of grief. Right? So when you are angry, don't speak. Be quiet. Hmm? Be quiet. Anger doesn't work righteousness. That's how it is. Alright? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, I said study to be what? Quiet. You know when to speak and when to be quiet. Isaiah said, you've given me the tongue of the learned. There's a tongue of the learned. It's not with everyone. He said, you've given me the tongue of the learned that I know what I should say. I have a what? Do you have that scripture? Let me show them. Isaiah. Hmm? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, these are tweets from heaven now. I can't I can just go without showing you these things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can have what you say. You, you can have. You, the, the good thing is, I have my mouth and God has given me ability to speak. So I can determine. God has not put this in the hands of another. It's in my control. Okay, I can decide. And I have the word of God to chart the course of my life. Bible said the world were framed by the word of God. I can frame my own life. I can frame how my business will go. And no economic situation can change how my business will go. See, no one can change the direction of my children. Once I start to declare it, that's how it's going to be. It will turn out that way. You see, let me quote this scripture because I see my time is up. When Jesus was risen and the women came to look for Jesus, they found the stone removed and a man there sitting on the stone and they were afraid. And the man said to them, remember this. It was an angel. He said to these two women, who are you looking for? He said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Then the man said something I want you to say. The man said, he is risen as he said. Do you see it? The man is risen as he said. You see, he could not not rise. He spoke resurrection so much. Huh? He is risen as he said. Now, now that means, yes, as the man said, that's what happened to him. Hmm? So he has prospered as he said. The man is blessed as he said. That's what God keeps looking for. That's what the angel said. You see, it's your word. It's what you declare. It's what you declare. Huh? Now, where was I, Collins? Don't worry. These are two. Uh -huh. Isaiah. Okay. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. 
is a tongue of those that have learned that they have learned spiritual things. They don't speak, not just speak things. The tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. <laughs> it is the right word. It's not an empty word. A word in season and he says to him that is weary. Okay? A word in season. He, wa- he awakened me morning by morning. He awakened my ear to hear. See, I speak what I hear. Jesus said, I speak only what I'm hearing from my father. I don't speak nonsense. It's what the father says to me that I'm going to say. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm listening for what God is saying to me. All right? I listen to him. And God said, today declare this. Even when you put me in before in front of any challenge, I'm listening. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to what God has to say, and then I declare it forth. Glory to God. What does the Living Bible say, please? TLB. The Lord God has given me His words of wisdom, so that I may know what I should say to these weary words. Glory to God. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. He opens my spirit to what God wants. Morning by morning. Which means every time I have a word for the weary. I have a word for the weary. I have a word in season. Glory to God. I have a word in season. Hallelujah. Can, can I show you one more scripture? Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Kelvin, I'm going to need your Bible for this one. Because I know you guys don't have this scripture. Deuteronomy 6. Put up verse 4, please. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Go to verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Look at verse 6. All right? Look at verse 6. And these words which I command you today shall be where? Not in your Bible not in your notebook in your spirit it is like giving you a plate of food and I say this plate of food shall be in your stomach what do you do I need to hear you what do you do to get it in your stomach huh you see that's what you do so when God says these words I speak should be in your spirit what is he saying eat Cause your belly to eat. Hmm. Put Ezekiel 3. I'll come there. Because you see, once you have an abundance of God's word, you will speak right. That's how it is. You will speak right. My God, I'm going to teach you today for 16 hours. Is that okay? (laughs) Ah, Verse 1. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you fight. When you are not search in scriptures and you learn on something, don't just write it in other books. Eat it. Because when you eat it, it becomes part of you. So he said, eat what you fight. Eat this scroll. It is the word of God he's talking about. Eat this scroll and go and speak. To the, see, see the speaking comes after eating. Problems we have speakers that haven't eaten. So they are making noise. You, sp- you eat this scroll. Oh, when Israel hears you, <laughs> there won't be empty words. Look at verse 2. It, it, just like if you want to speak to your money condition, eat. Rise up, eat, then go speak. Is, is it a business troubling you? Wake up, get a scripture. Eat, 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 eat. Go to the business, speak. 
that's the order he says then go speak so i opened my mouth you see that's that's how you do it and he caused me to eat that scroll he caused me to eat it verse verse three please and he said to me son of man feed your belly feed your spirit i said belly is your spirit feed your belly Fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate and it was in my mouth like honey for sweetness. Glory to God. Mm. You know what you've been doing for the last one hour? You've been eating. Problem is in the church of God we eat and eat and eat and don't speak. <laughs> so today I'm telling you after such a teaching where you've been eating go home, start talking. All right? Start speaking. Get some quiet place, just you, and begin to declare. You know what angels are waiting for? They hearken to the voice of his word. They are listening to what you're saying. And they've been watching you through the day. You've been with them through the day. And they keep listening for when you will speak God's word. And there is no God's word in your speech. So they have nothing to do. When you begin to declare God's word, angels listen to God's word as for instruction. That's how it is. As long as you're speaking man's word, man's world, that's what you're talking about. He just have nothing to work on. Nothing. It was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Verse 4, please. Hallelujah. Then he said to me, son of man, go to the house of Israel. Speak with my word. Speak with my words. <laughs> you're not hearing me the man said speak with my word you know what God is saying he's saying to the man after eating the word you will speak as me hmm? he, he is saying when he says speak with my words it's like saying speak with my mouth that's what he said do you understand yourself? That's what he said. He said, speak with my mouth. Speak as me. So, First Peter 4, 11 says, He that speaks, let him speak as the very oracle of God. Let him speak as God himself. Oh, my God. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm? So, I don't just talk. You see, by now, you see, it's impossible for me to begin to say, Oh, I'm poor. I'm unworthy. I don't belong in your presence. Jesus is thinking, angels beat half of me. You can't talk that way. But sometimes you talk that way and they let you talk so because there's so little you know about yourself in his presence. And the Holy Spirit has to keep telling you, Oh, that's not who you are. That's not what you've been made. Okay? Mm -hmm. See? The character of your words is the character of your life. That's how it is. I said words have consequences. They have consequences. Man says, speak with my... I would love to see what the Living Bible said here. Then he said, son of man, son of dust, I'm sending you to the people of Israel with my messages see and the message is not in the notebook it's the spirit of a man I said eat first then speak to the mountain that's what you do well we are Deuteronomy 6 eh? and I read verse 4 and 5 and I was at verse 6 quickly please okay verse 6 said these words which I command you today shall be in your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children Talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Now allow me to use the voice. It's called the voice version of the Bible. Okay? Listen to the voice. Listen to what it says. Make the things I am commanding you today to be part of who you are. Make what I'm saying to be part of who you are. Make it. And you make it by declaring God's word. Listen. Repeat them to your children. Hmm? That's why I said you don't talk other things to your kids. You speak God's word only. To yourself, God's word. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you are sitting together in your home. God's word. When you are walking together down the road. God's word. 
Make them the last thing. Listen to this. Make them the last thing you talk about before you go to bed. Hmm? The words of God. And then he says, and the first thing you talk about the next morning. Think about that. The last thing I'm going to be speaking is God's word as I go to bed. The first thing I'll talk when I get out of bed is God's word. Hmm? Oh, in between here, only God knows your experience that night. Only God knows the, the progress you make in the spirit once you're talking like that. Well, time won't allow me. Let's finish with Ezekiel 37. One. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. Are you there? Mm -hmm. The heart of the Lord was upon me and brought me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley. Okay? And it was full of what? Bones. Verse 2, quickly. Then he caused me to pass by the dry bones, okay, all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, the bones were very dry. Verse 3. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Think about that. These are not dead bodies. These are dry bones. Dry. Situations can be more worse than that. All right? It can be any worse than that. No flesh, nothing on them, just dry bones. And God said, can they live? Hmm? Can they live? So I answered, oh Lord, only you know this. Verse 4. Again he said to me, prophesy. See the answer? Prophesy to these bones. That's why I said, speak to that business. All right? Speak to that situation. And then get the word of God. That's what you speak to the, to the situation. Prophesy to these bones and say. Verse 4, 5, pardon me. Verse 5, the Lord to these bones. Surely I will cause breath. Glory to God. To enter into you and you shall live. Hmm? Now, the man should have said, hear the word of the Lord, you bones. You bones are very dry. That's their situation. The word of the Lord, you say what you want to happen. Just like when God saw darkness all around Genesis 1, he didn't say, ooh, it's very dark. He said, light be. It's what you want that you speak. Hmm? He said, and you shall live. Look at verse 6. I will put news on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with kin. Put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Glory to God. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise. Glory to God. I, I am telling you when you begin to speak God's word there will be activity. You might not see nothing on the physical. But believe you me, in the spirit, bones have started moving. One bone is getting its neighbor. As you prophesy. But you must be speaking God's word. He said, as I prophesied, there was noise. And suddenly, a rattling. And the bones came together. Bone to bone. That's how your situation will begin to align. As you keep prophesying. And you prophesy as you are commanded. You prophesy as you're hearing. You are declaring it. Bone to bone. Verse 8 please. Indeed as I looked. The snews and the flesh came upon them. The skin covered them. But there was no breath. God said I will cause breath to come into you. That's what he said. He said I will cause breath to come into you. What happened was snews. And everything came. There was no breath. How can there be no breath? And God said I will cause breath. Hmm? You know what you do? You keep saying. So the man said, Lord, there's no breath. And he said to me, prophesy. Sir. Don't stop yet. Is it breath you want? He said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to the breath, that says the Lord, come. From the four weeds, O breath, breathe on this slain that they may live. Glory to God. At least there are no more bones. They are slain. Hmm? 
You see, we made progress. Yes. But they may leave. Verse 11, please. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. Believe you me, imagine you were Ezekiel watching all this unfold before you. You're watching in a vision, because there are vision. You're watching bones come together through words. Then you're watching words again put breath in them. Once you come out of that vision, you will be so careful of what you say. You'll be so careful. But that's not the, the big thing in this chapter. Let me show you what is bigger because most people stop right here. Look at verse 11. You need to always pick this verse. Then he is saying to me, son of man, these bones, listen to this, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Why? Because they indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, we ourselves are cut off. You know what God just revealed here? He revealed the bones you saw in verse 1 is exactly the spiritual condition of my children. And why it is so is because of what they say. Did you see it now? Dry bones are exactly what they've been saying. They'll be saying we are dry bones. So God said exactly what you saw. Hmm? Yes. Just, just, it's just so clear. So I said man can live beyond his words. Is it impossible? Finally, let's wrap up Isaiah 33. This is verse 24. 33 verse 24. Glory to God. Have you learned something today? Yes, mm -hmm. I said Isaiah, not Ezekiel. Isaiah 33. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can have what you say. You can have it. You can have what you say. And the inhabitants oh, put King James please. Can we start from verse 23? Thy tacklings are loosened they could not well strengthen their mass. They could not spread their sail. Then is the prey of great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. Verse 24. And the inhabitant shall not say, hmm? I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven. The iniquity. Use the amplified please. And no inhabitant of what? Talk to me. No inhabitant of what? Of Zion will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there, hmm? who dwell where? In Zion. And Bible said, you have come where? Mount Zion. I'm telling you, you are in a place where the language is different. Hmm? You can be an inhabitant of Zion and saying I'm sick. It's inconsistent with where you are. It's inconsistent. So he said something here. He said, but you have come to Mount Zion. Thank you. That's the one I was quoting. So he says, I know inhabitant of Zion will say I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their wickedness, their sin. Their, you see, I'm already forgiven. And I told you on Sunday, forgiveness and healing, can you see them there? Both of them. See, I'm an inhabitant of Zion, so I don't say I'm sick. There's no sickness there. Not only sickness, see, sin is dealt with. And so if sin is dealt with, so is death. So is everything that sin brought. Yes. I said those are the last one, right? Okay. I had not heard from the Lord clearly. Uh, Psalm 87. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, he is the boss. I can say the last one and he says last, last one. Psalm 87. Hallelujah. Glory. You can have what you say. Uh, no. Oh, are you hearing me? You know, we are sowing seeds. All right? Continually. See? Speak, speak God's word. Declare it. Declare it. Watch this. Ah, ha, ha. 
Glory to God. Can we start from verse 3 or somewhere there? Glorious things. Glorious things. Excellent things. Amazing things. How is I'm not worthy glorious? You didn't hear me. How is I'm not worthy glorious? How is I'm sick glorious? How is I'm poor glorious? He said, glorious things are spoken of you. O city of God. The Bible said, Matthew 5 said, you are the city. I am the city. Isaiah 60 said, you are the city. So it's me. Glorious things are spoken of you. That means when God talks about me, he says glorious things. Hallelujah. Heaven speaks wonderfully of me. One time the devil showed up in heaven and God wanted to talk about Job. He said, have you seen my servant Job? There is none like his. <laughs> and that's that Job who is not born again. How about me that presents to the Father all that Jesus is? I just say something so big. <laughs> when I say present to the Father all that Jesus is, I mean when the Father looks at me, he sees Jesus. Hallelujah. So what he said, in fact, Jesus said, he loves me exactly the way he loves him. Glorious things are spoken of you. <laughs> Verse 4, please. Mm. I will mention Rahab, Egypt, and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre, with Ethiopia. This one was born there. Verse 5. But of Zion. Mm. Are you Zion? Are you Zion? We, we just saw we are in Zion and we are that Zion. He said of Zion it will be said. This one and that one were born in her. And the Most High himself will establish our glory to God. Put the New Living Translation please. Mm. Hallelujah. Regarding Jerusalem it will be said everyone enjoys the right of citizenship there. I, I enjoy the right of being a citizen. <laughs> you are not hearing me. I enjoy the right of being a citizen of heaven. <laughs> I am saying health is my right. Yeah. Huh? It's my right. I don't have to be on my knees begging God. Oh God, begging for help. I don't beg for what is my right. No, when you see teachers and doctors on the street with Mabango lifting them like, are they begging the government? They are demanding their right. You don't beg for your right. No. And God's government is not injust so that you have to pro protest for your right. <laughs> no. No. God's government <laughs> is so good. It takes care of us. Hallelujah. Enjoy the right of citizenship there and the most I will personally bless. God will personally bless me. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your words are so full of power. I thank you Lord for revealing to us truth that what we say can become our experience. Dear Lord, I thank you for every word spoken concerning us in the scriptures is now fulfilled. We are walking in the light of your word enjoying the things you ordained for us long time before the world was laid. Father, we thank you for every provision made available in Christ is now our experience. We give you praise in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen.